So onions, we're gonna start caramelizing some onions. For, uh, we're gonna make a delicious quiche, actually. Um, and the onions you choose, um, I mean, it's, it's really up to you, it's preference. Uh, red onions are delicious raw, really nice and sweet raw. Um, they're great caramelized as well. A lot of the sugars come out. Spanish onions as well, sweet onions, cooking onions. Um, this guy here, the white onion, um, is used mostly raw. Uh, this is fantastic in salsas. It's used a lot actually in uh, Latin cuisine for fresh salsas. Um, it's got a really bright flavor, a little bit of heat, but it's not overly aggressive. Um, so you can use it, you can cook this as well, but it would probably stick to sweet, Spanish, red. They caramelize really, really well. Um, so I'm gonna slice a few up. I've got some done ahead of time. Um, it's easier if you cut them in half. That way it's not rolling around on you. Um, you've probably cut onions before, but just in case you haven't. <laughs> uh, and we're just gonna slice them kind of thin. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's amazing. The outside as well. This, I always take the first layer off. It's a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, if you're doing a lot of onions, and this is for most vegetable peelings, keep a, a, a freezer bag in the freezer, collect your carrot peelings, collect your onion, even the out, outer part of the onion, um, and those are great reserves for stocks. So you can use those oh, yeah. That's a good point. as well. Yeah. So you don't have to throw too much away. And we have a great YouTube video on how to make your own vegetable stock if you check out our YouTube page. So we're going to throw them in a pan. And the key to really good caramelizing, I think, is having a large pan. Uh, if you're doing them in a pot with a smaller surface area, what happens is the, layer, the, the onions will just stack on top of each other. So the ones at the bottom will crisp up nice, will get a really nice caramelization, really nice color. The ones at the top will steam more, um, and they'll get really nice and soft, but you won't get a really nice color on all the onions. So if you have a really large pan with a big surface area, it usually works a lot better. And so one large onion is good for this. Uh, about a tablespoon of olive oil, you can use grapeseed oil, medium heat, again, nothing too aggressive in there. What a pinch of salt. The salt will just draw some of that moisture out of the onions, so it'll speed up that process a little bit. And we'll give it a quick stir. <laughs> so I, I've added uh, some sliced garlic as well in here. And what I did, I was jumping up there because I'm too short to grab this lid. <laughs> it's, it's a great idea to cover it. So stir fry it for a couple minutes. <laughs> I don't know where my spoon went, um, and then put the lid on top. That'll just, again, speed up the process. It's going to trap that moisture inside, soften your onions. Mm -hmm. You'll end up with some really nice caramelized onions. And while we were gabbing away, mm -hmm. Jeremy was adding another excellent source of anilin. Does anyone know what this is? Artichokes. Very good. Now these, these are baby artichokes. Um, I love the baby artichokes because they're, you can eat them raw, pretty much. They're really, really nice and tender. Uh, what I like to do is just take off just the outermost layer, so some of the tougher leaves. Um, and with the baby ones, you don't have to take off too much, just until you start to get a really nice kind of uh, creamy yellow color on the, on the outside. Cut off the tops with the little needles. Those don't taste good. Uh, the bottom, you want to clean up a little bit, so you can see how it's a little rough here. So we're just gonna clean up the bottom. And you can either work really fast uh, or just have a lemon nearby because these will oxidize pretty quickly. Uh, artichokes are I think one of, the, one of the fastest ones. Anytime I'm working with artichokes, artichokes and potato, they oxidize really, really mm -hmm. quickly. Um, so again, top, chop off the, the top with the little needles there. And then we're gonna cut them in half. And what's nice about the baby ones too is that choke hasn't really fully developed yet, so you don't have to take anything out. Uh, the larger are the chokes, you can choke on the choke. It's <laughs> yeah. a good way to remember. It's Wait a second. Way to remember. Um, it's got, it's pretty fibrous. Uh, the small ones, you can just leave it as is. So I'm just cutting it in half, and we're gonna thinly slice them, kind of like we did with our onions. And I'll do two here. And I mean, we're making a quiche. You know, the onions themselves, great prebiotic ingredient. Artichoke as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
the other artichoke name, the Jerusalem artichoke, not the same thing. Um, you can use that as well. Uh, add a little bit of thyme as well. Any dried herbs you want there, it's up to you. Um, and we're going to let this just slowly cook. Again, medium heat. Now the lid is off. So saute five minutes, lid off. Lid on five minutes until they're nice and soft. And then another five minutes, lid off. That's just a quick caramelization. I don't, want, I don't need them like super concentrated and sticky. Now the, the crust. So this, the filling's almost done. Uh, again, you can do this ahead of time. Let it cool. Put it in the fridge. No problem. Uh, the crust, you can either use a pre-made if you want. Um, you can make your own nice crumbly dough crust. Um, I figured I'd cheat and just use potatoes instead. Um, and it's a really, really simple way to do a crust without making a dough. So what I've done, uh, what I've done is just one potato. Um, if you have a mandolin, uh, I sliced it there. It took me two seconds. Really, really simple. I also did it with, uh, I tried it before with just a vegetable peeler. Works the exact same way. You get the, the perfect thinness on it. And it's okay that they're irregular shapes because we're going to be layering it in here. And think about the nutritional difference between using just potatoes, you know, you're getting some nice potassium, which helps to lower blood pressure, versus if you were doing a commercial dough that had some trans fats in it, that's going to have a negative impact from a heart health point of view. Mm -hmm. So this is a great healthy option on how to make a, a beautiful crust. So just a teaspoon of olive oil, a little salt, a little pepper. <laughs> And we want to try to mix them around, try to coat each one as well as possible. Mm -hmm. And did you grease the pan a little bit? I had, yeah, a little bit, but I mean, if, if it's a good nonstick, you, you probably don't need it. Um, but if you don't trust it, you can put, you know, you can put a little oil on there too. And then we're just going to be layering them. And this is a lot easier, trust me, than making a crust. That is brilliant. Some people like their crust, they, you know, they won't try this. Whenever I see recipes for a crustless quiche, I get sad on the inside. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why would you have it without crust? So, so this, this like is a nice this. medium where it doesn't take as long as making a crust. I don't have to roll it out. This is the crust I can feel good about. Yeah. Now you can even, you can throw some sweet potato slices in there as well if you want. Mm -hmm. um, sweet potato does have a higher water percentage, so they don't get as crispy. They get a little, a little on the, the soggy side, but you can definitely do a little bit of both for sure. And we, we just want to make sure that it kind of climbs up the side a little bit here. And it's really easy. I mean, it doesn't take that long. And then this is going to go into the oven. 375 for about 20 minutes. I'll show you what it looks like. Just until it's just until it's nice and, and golden brown. You know, the, uh, the outer edges are going to get a little crispier, but it'll work all the same. And so this is what you end up with. It's a thin crust, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really nice. It's delicious with a quiche. Um, what like you can do is, fries on the outside. yeah, it's yeah. a really nice crispiness. What you can do is you can put your, your quiche right into here. See how easy that comes off. Wow. Um, I actually did one ahead of time and you can take it out completely. So that's, that's the, the shell right there. That's amazing. And that's just the thin, thin sliced potatoes. Really, really easy. Really nice for any sort of savory kind of pie dish. So our dish is done. Uh, half a cup of milk here. This is just 2%. Uh, if you want, if you're looking to increase the calories, you can definitely go for cream. That's probably the more traditional route for quiche, but 2% works. Could you go low, even lower fat and do skim milk? Or would it have a... You can, because it's such a low temperature, we're, we're, we're going at 350. It'll probably work. I mean, at that point, you could probably use skim milk and water have a very fine line for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one percent even. One percent um, would work. Yeah, okay. just because any sort of heat with a very low fat dairy tends to break yeah. on you. Um, what about powdered milk? Sorry. What about one percent powdered milk? Powdered. You want you want yeah if you hydrate it yeah with water yeah that'll work. Because I know there's some cooking that obviously does that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chives. Uh, and here, getting more of the like onion chives. family yes. into your recipes. I'm adding manchego. 
That's because I like cheese, but you can add just a, just a little bit if you want. You don't have to add it at all. Um, something with a bigger flavor, we usually suggest even like a Parmesan cheese. Um, you don't have to add too much, but it gives it a nice, a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Gruyere. Gruyere would be Classic, nice. Classic, absolutely, for sure. So we're gonna mix that through there. And then I did a lot of caramelized onions and artichokes here, but ideally let this cool down. Cast iron, the handle also gets hot. Just to keep in mind. <laughs> so if you added this hot, then you'd get scrambled eggs? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Probably. I mean, I'm putting this in the oven right away. But if you can um, let it cool a little bit, you definitely don't want to add something hot into your mixture and then let it sit and make it after. Mm -hmm. That's probably not a good idea. Um, but I'm making this right away. Because I've diluted it with the milk as well, probably won't get any scrambling going mm -hmm. on. So that is gonna go right into, here I'll do this. There we go. Right into the potato pie shell. Nice. We're gonna spread it around. All right, and then that's pretty much it. You can top it with you know, whatever you want. Cherry tomatoes make it look pretty. <laughs> Add some nice color. We eat Nothing with our eyes with is something we're always saying here in the Elixir Kitchen. So presentation is important, especially if you have a smaller appetite. Making things look beautiful makes a big difference. Yeah. And that's going into the oven, 350 degrees. Um, for this recipe, it took about 25 minutes. Um, you just want to make sure that it's set. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. You can do a toothpick test. If it comes out clean, then you're good to go. So this is going to go in, and I'll show you what it looks oh, like. Look at that. There we go. Yes. 